Welcome to EVO 10 ECU Flash Training Part 11. In this video, we're going to learn how to program and work with our Omni 4-bar map sensors. Now, the EVO 10 ECU is set up to work with the factory 3-bar map sensor. The 3-bar is accurate to around 32 pounds of boost. If we want to run more pressure than that, so we want to go higher in boost levels, we need to implement an Omni 4-bar. So we'd have to install it and then program it within our ECU. I'm going to be going through that process of going and actually programming and setting everything up. So the ECU is going to recognize that 4-bar map sensor. We're also going to be taking a look at just adding some data log functionality in EvoScan so we can properly capture and log a 4-bar map sensor scale. We're going to have a lot to cover, so let's jump into this video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at setting up our calibration file to work with an Omni 4-bar map sensor. We're going to find that the stock EVO 10 map sensor is good to 3-bar of operating, so that's going to be uh, up to approximately 31, 32 PSI. Now technically a 3-bar scale is only accurate to around 30 pounds of boost, but we will find that the sensor does have a little bit more range of reading than a typical 3-bar, so it might be more like something like a 3.2-bar. So if we need to run anything more than 32 PSI, we need to switch over to a 4-bar map sensor, and that's where the Omni sensor is going to come into play. Now we have to update some things in our calibration file so it's going to work, so let's go take a look at those things that we need to switch around and some things that we need to know in working with our 4-bar map sensor. So we're going to jump here. Um, I have a 5557006-2010 USDM 5-speed manual GSR file open um, for reference sake if you want to follow along exactly what we're doing here in the video. We will find um, in our current round metadata, if we scroll all the way towards the bottom, we're going to find have a dedicated section here to Omni 4-bar boost. Now if your particular ROM ID does not have the Omni 4-bar boost patch in it, you're going to have to uh, upload a different ROM ID type or different operating system. You're not going to be running that ROM ID type. Not all of the ROM IDs are patched with the 4-bar, the Omni 4-bar patch here. So be mindful of that. You may have to switch it to a different year or even within the same model year to a different ROM ID. So be flexible um, and keep, keep in mind that you can go ahead and switch your ROM ID with different years. I've went over that in a previous video in our training course here. So if you're unfamiliar with that or the concept, jump into that video, I go over um, pretty extensively what is compatible between the years. What we're going to find in our Omni 4-bar boost section, we're going to find that we have a uh, three tables here. Let's pop these open. We're going to find that these are going to be switching over our sensor from the stock 3-bar to the Omni 4-bar. So this is going to be the very first step we have in doing our conversion for the map sensor to read. Now we can find here, if we slide these down, that we're going to have these three tables. They all say stock. We need to get them to change to showing that they have a 4-bar patch enabled. What we're going to do is click on the blue uh, rectangle here that says stock. We're going to be using our close bracket key and toggling it. We can see Omni 4-bar patch. We do this to all of these windows here, all of these uh, blue rectangles. We can see they all say Omni 4-bar patch. That's already applied. We can see that's also shown. We've changed it here. Anything in the pink here is showing that we've highlighted a change. Let's go ahead and close these tables out. So that's the first step to tell the ECU that we are running a different map sensor and that it needs to correlate the voltage to map pressure in a different scale than the stock 3-bar. Because if it's looking at the same exact voltage and we don't update it, it's going to think that the manifold pressure is, is completely off and it's going to be skewing all of our fuel calculations because we know that the map pressure is used in speed density operation and the map calcs, if that's not correct, again, it's going to skew up how uh, it's going to be registering load and also how it's going to be going in and referencing the injector pulse width if it's estimating the airflow from our load calc tables. So the next step here, we're going to go into our current ROM metadata and we're going to scroll down here and look at our map based load calc tables. We have a calc table 1, 2, and 3. We need to open up all three of these tables here. Let's just kind of bring these out and let's go over what this represents. So first things first, if we look at our map load calc 1 table, we're going to find this table here is map pressure on our x-axis scale. It goes up here to approximately 29.27 PSI. Now, Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.